So, you've been visiting some of those warriors and crack sites that you probably shouldn't. Then you got tricked into a fake Windows update screen. And now, your files are all encrypted. How did it happen? Well, in this video, we're going to do a live breakdown of McNiber ransomware. We're going to execute it on a virtual machine, see what it does, and also show you how it manages to defeat traditional AV technology and why it's so hard to detect for the analysts. This is Leo, and you are watching the PC Security Channel. So as promised, we have a sample of the ransomware on the desktop. As you can see, this is called Windows Update App X, and this is one of the names that it goes by. It's got different names like Windows Software Utility. And as you can tell from the icon, it looks like an MSI Windows installer. And if we right click and see the properties, it is going to show up as an MSI package that opens with Windows installer. So again, it's not an EXE. It's not a typical malware binary. And if you look at the digital signatures, it is a signed file as well. So all of these parameters mean a lot of AVs might just ignore this or think it is a legitimate file. And a user might as well. And what's worse, even in an enterprise, an analyst may look at this and go, oh, well, it's just probably another one of those stupid Windows updates but it's not. If we go ahead and execute this, as you will see, it starts up with Windows installer, but then we have a website that's supposed to open. It seems to have gone down now, but if we go and check our documents, you will see that everything is encrypted. Same story with our pictures. And we've got a readme file as is typical with any ransomware attack. If we open this, it says all your documents, photos, databases, blah, 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 have been encrypted. Your faults are not damaged. They were modified only. The modification is reversible, but any attempts to restore your files with third-party software will be fatal. And then the usual download Tor browser, go to the Onion domain, and then try to pay us money and hope that we will be true to our word and decrypt your files traditional ransomware stuff. But what makes this so dangerous is the fact that every process in the chain of execution that leads to this encryption event is often going to be trusted. And we're gonna see this in Intezer in a moment. By the way, thank you to Intezer for sponsoring this video. The file is now analyzed. And as you can see, we've got a summary that says this is malicious. So the detection has come through for Intezer. But if we look at the dynamic execution and the things that are happening in memory, if we click on show all here, look at this. So first we have MSI exec.exe. This is a trusted system process signed by Microsoft, all good. Then we've got services.exe, again, a trusted process, all good. And if we scroll down, pretty much everything in the process chain that was identified by the sandbox is trusted and good to go. If we take a look at the behavior in the sandbox, once again, we've got some screenshots here of the Windows installer preparing to install. Nothing suspicious about this in itself. We don't see any network activity. There is some file system activity. And interestingly, the only way Intezer probably flags this as malicious is if we go into their detect and hunt feature, which is in beta, this is a new feature they've introduced. We've got an artifact for file read on a temp file. And this is the one that was flagged as seen in generic malware. Even if we go into TTPs, we're not going to see much. We're only going to see software discovery. So collecting data about what is on the system, what is installed. But again, this would be typical Windows behavior anyway. If you've got an update or something, maybe it just queries the list of applications installed. So now you can see why it's so challenging for an analyst to figure this out. If you notice it in an environment, even if we take a look at the Varstol graph for this, there's no direct link to any malicious EXE, although it does contact a lot of URLs. But once again, no clear indicators that someone would be able to look at this and in a second say that this is malicious. Of course, by now it's got 33 detections on Varstol, but that's just time, you know, people have had the time to research this. But on day one, would you be able to detect something like this? Based on my experience, in a lot of cases, probably not. And this is why it's so important to have behavioral defenses to prevent the encryption behavior, regardless of what launched it. Now, according to Bleeping Computer, it's not entirely clear how 
this malware is propagating itself. As I mentioned earlier, um, some of it is through fake Juarez and crack sites. So don't do piracy, but there may be other vectors for transmission that we're currently unaware of. Some of the common file names as reported here are Windows 10 system upgrade software.msi. So again, if you notice something like this in your environment, watch out for that. And some of these file names are pretty good. I mean, system upgrade Win 10 looks kind of legit. This is an example of a download site, which itself looks kind of sketchy. Like if I was on a site like this, I would be thinking about the decisions I've made in my life, but this is often not going to be the main site that you're visiting. It could be like you visited some other website and it just pops up a link and the secondary site downloads it. It might even happen in the background without showing you. But once installed, the ransomware will also delete shadow copies to inhibit any kind of recovery. And then it's going to create the ransom note as we saw on our VM. And this is also a great example of why it is still important to have your own VM and run samples there. Because you can always run things in the sandbox. And I know in a lot of organizations, people do this. They will just automate the entire sandbox process and they will have like a Cape sandbox or a cuckoo sandbox and they'll just look at the analysis. They're going to go into a section like this, look at some of the screenshots, look at some of the data that's collected from the system and try to make a decision. But let's be realistic here. <laughs> if you didn't know what this file was, would you just look at this and go, oh yeah, this is a ransomware? Probably not. It's much easier to see that when you actually run it on a true system. So as an organization, it's definitely worth investing or providing your analysts with the resources to be able to run things on a proper true VM, not just have an automated sandbox process. As a user, well, watch out. <laughs> and don't fall for these fake Windows Update type screens. These days, Windows Update doesn't happen sporadically. It will typically ask you, there'll be a notification if it's going to restart your PC or something. So if you see a full screen application pretending to download updates or something, try to press Control Alt Delete and see if it's an actual Windows update or something just hiding. Because it's very easy to build a prank Windows Update screen as I'm showing you right now. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and share it if you did. And once again, if you're a business and you'd like to consult with us to harden your defenses against ransomware, please reach out at tbsc.tech. And a big thank you to our sponsor, Synthesir. If you're an analyst, you're probably aware of them already. If not, definitely go and check them out. They've got a free community account, so anybody can go to analyze.intizer.com and take a look at samples the way I'm doing now. You can analyze any files you like. Check out their new detect and hunt feature, which has this artifact effectiveness pyramid that helps you classify files. It's obviously not the best for this particular sample, but with a lot of EXCs, it's very useful. It's also a great place to look at what's going on in the scene so you can see trending analysis, analyzes. It's one of those few places in the world where you've got trending malware research. <laughs> so check them out, show them some love for sponsoring the PC Security Channel. They've been helping us a lot in getting our hands on every major new threat that comes out. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security Channel. We have a lot of awesome cybersecurity content coming up, a lot of educational stuff as well. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.